Okay, so welcome back to my channel for another video. We've got the afternoon breeze is blowing a gale and we've got just a crazy bird there that I've covered up to try to keep them a little bit quiet but there are probably some noises you'll hear as I go along. Anyway, we've got here a 1998 Ford Laser. This is my wife's old car. <clears throat> I got her another car from the auction, did some work to that and a uh, bit of an upgrade for her so I've been doing some work on her poor old dilapidated car it was pretty sad no one had uh, give it any love for a long time so I've been uh, doing just that and uh, I'll just give you a little look around, just pop the bonnet. So the problems that this car has had when I first got my hands on it, the two biggest problems were the clutch was absolutely stuffed. As soon as you try, uh, it's a five speed manual, so you put it, take off from the standing position, put it into second gear, as soon as you tried to accelerate the clutch would just slip completely so you, it was really really bad. The other uh, problem it had was the brakes were horrendous. So it's the type of problem that puts your foot on the brakes and it just about puts you through the windscreen. So it wasn't through lack of working, it was they were working too much. So um, I've managed to have this thing for a little while off the road, still licensed, ready to go, but basically kind of in the car hospital. I've put a new clutch in it. This is a few months ago now, and uh, that was a very interesting job to do on your own, but... Uh, East West engine, haven't had much to do with those, but uh, pretty tight quarters in there, so anyway, I've got the job done. I'll just see if I can insert a photo of the clutch when it was in. So after that, got to work on the brakes. And uh, did the back brakes first. Put some new uh, disc pads in, and I tell you what, they're the, just about the worst disc pads I've ever seen. So I've got a picture of that, and I'll see if I can pop a picture of those in right now. Next was the front. So the actual pads weren't too bad. They, you know, had some wear on them, and that's just standard for a manual or any car of this age you know the brakes are going to need a replacing after time but its biggest problem was the actual sliders on the calipers they were frozen solid so there was no movement in there the piston was moving fine but the the sliders were just jammed jammed solid so I think one out of four were moving so um, I've disassembled that cleaned them all out got them moving really nicely now so put a new set of pads in, brakes are nice and progressive now, you put your foot on gently, it'll slow down gently, before put your foot on gently, you were through the windscreen, so it was all or nothing, so um, all good now. This poor old thing does have some of that uh, bad paint or bad clear coat thing going on, so it's on the roof as well. A little unfortunate, I'll devalue it somewhat, but it is what it is. Crazy bird going crazy. A little bit of panel damage on here. But it's unfortunate because this is actually now that the brakes are done, the clutch is done, the tyres are good. It actually is a really good little runner. So This, sorry, shaky cam. This bird's a bit of a nutter. 
So I'm actually um, preparing this for sale now. So there's not much I can do about the paint. There's not much I can do about the panel. But I am cleaning up the inside. So this is in the car. It's quite tidy and clean in here. Needs a bit of a vacuum and a detail, but one thing that did cause me some concern was the old radio was not working very well. So, typical symptom of you twiddle the dial here, and on the display, it would just randomly go from 0 to 10, 10 to 5. It was all over the place, and you'd be just clicking the dial around slowly. So there was a big issue in there so um it's just the good old ford one that came with the car with a cassette player it takes you back uh that would have actually made a good video but uh actually i got halfway through it and thought this would make a good video but it's too late i'm already halfway through it so out it came i pulled it apart i went through the whole board the circuit board redid a whole pile of solder joints, lubed the controls up, just give it a bit of a service. Fortunately, it's working great now. So it's got a little skip with the volume control still, just every so often. But uh, I've got it going. And the it actually sounds pretty good. It's got four speaker stereo in here. So... Um, it sounds pretty good all except for driver's side front there was nothing coming out so uh, I've got into that a little bit now I've taken the trim off the door and that's where the speaker came out from I got it took it to my workbench and give it a bit of a test Right, so here's the actual speaker itself. See, it's got the nice little connector on it there. Pretty small speaker, so nothing high calibre. But got the multimeter here. And a couple of clip leads. working one-handed thing I'm still getting used to that so we'll just clip on there and show I'll just go straight to the other probe and show you that it's all but nothing ohms so that's pretty much what a dead short looks like. That's what open looks like. So clip onto the other side of this speaker terminal and you'll see the voice coil is open. So this speaker is dead. So just as a quick comparison, I've got a little test speaker here see it says 8 ohms kids next door are losing their minds and we've got 8 ohms so that speaker is good this is not the speaker that's going to go back in the car mind you I've got a new set of those, I'll show you those in just a moment, but this is just to demonstrate what, it, what that other speaker should have been doing. So just as a quick demonstration, here I am clipped onto the speaker connector in the door. This old one, don't mind... <laughs> that with that off there clip 
clip on. And music in the background but there's nothing happening here okay disconnect there these clip leads these are new ones and they're so slippery on these rubbers that you're trying to get it and it's just slipping off all the time. Right. right. There you go. Okay, so I went and picked up a set of these speakers five and a quarter inch, 13 centimetres, so <coughs> I'm hoping that these will fit the bill. So let's just have a, an unboxing. Got, haven't got two hands, got to use your feet. Right, I'm going to mangle that box. So this is it. Looks pretty good. Do something with those connectors. It's not exactly the same as what we've got here. It's two spade connectors. The old one has got that and this to stop the water getting into it. Let's see if I can get that off. I mean we've got three holes here, we've got four holes in the new one. But we'll see what we can do. It's got a bit of gooby geep on it from black stuff there. This stuff. Tar from the black lagoon. Back in. And it's not a perfect fit. You've got a bit of a gap around the edges there, but I'm sure we can get those lugs enough overhang on each one to get a self tapper and a decent sized washer to grab hold of that and we'll see how we go with it I'll bring you back when I've had some progress okay I've got some of these clips in the installation kit and I've spaced them as best I can On the edge. Can't see the other one, my hand's in the way, but you get the idea. So I'll drill a bit of a hole in there, see what I can do for mounting. Okay, bring you back in a minute. Okay, so we're in here, creaky chair, and my extremely messy workbench but I've got a nice little 
bit niched out here to do this job and after more work than I don't know if it was really worth I managed to get this connector set up on the new speaker looks alright from a distance it'll work boy what a lot of messing around anyway there's one I managed to peel this thing off the old one so I'm got I'm half inclined just to screw that back on the door where it, the original speaker came from and that'll give it the protection from the top see what happens Okay, so we're in. See there, I've got some washers on there. There's not a lot of... That one's probably the worst of the lot. Very difficult to get it centred. I managed to get the top of that plastic thing. Plastic uh, protector. That sort of butcher the bits off the bottom, but... I did get the important bit on the top that's going to stop anything running down straight into the speaker. It's going to divert it over the top. So. Oh, some ABBA. How's that? Alright, so it's sounding pretty good too. Alright, let's try this. Mission Impossible. One hand. Oh, nice. Okay, we're on to the other side.
two hairs. Can't tell much from that. Anyway, let's get on to it. Before. And this is after. This is the bit we want. <laughs> and here's number two. In school. Okay, so this is actually about two or three weeks later. A bit of a delay, <coughs> excuse me, in uh, completing this, but had a few other things going on. But anyway, we are all done here. I know you can just see a door trim, but you can just see it's in there. And uh, we're done both sides. Okay, <clears throat> well, this car is just, you know, it is what it is, but at least when you hop in, you can turn the radio on, firstly it works, secondly, it sounds half decent, so if you're just going to buy this car as a daily driver to work and back, at least the radio works. I sort of, personally myself... I find that's a bit of a gauge on a car. If you get in a car, turn the key on, radio doesn't work, you start thinking to yourself straight away, okay, if that doesn't work, what else am I going to find with this car? It's kind of like one of those initial, um, yeah, when you get the initial feel for the car and the basic stuff is not working it puts doubts in your mind so that's why i made a bit of an effort to um, get this sorted out properly so that's it for this one and thanks for watching and uh <clears throat> more to come soon hopefully without me having a croaky voice okay thanks for watching and i'll see you later bye